Four years ago, I met my now boyfriend for the first time, and six months ago, I moved onto his canal boat. And since then, we've been travelling north of London in it. We so far made it as far as a small village near Milton Keynes, and here's been my experience so far. As someone who's lived in a house my whole life prior, it was quite the change. But luckily my boyfriend had already lived on board for six years so he was able to show me most of the ropes and tell me what to expect. Many have said that I seem to take to boat life quite well even though there's so much going over my head, especially regarding the engine. I haven't got a bloody clue with that thing. While it does seem all romantic travelling around on a boat, there are quite a few sacrifices you need to make. Internet is patchy depending on where you are. Electricity supply is seasonal and non-existent in the winter. You have no fixed address unless you have a permanent mooring, which can cost upwards of seven grand. And you can't run a car and you need to be a minimalist like me. And DIY, there is a lot of DIY to do on the boat. In fact, less than a month of me moving on board, we had the boat out of the water for repairs. And um, besides this power wash done by one of the marina staff, my BF and I had a lot of icky jobs to get done. The canals are seasonal and this winter has been quite the routine shake up for me, but not so much because of the cold. That hasn't been the issue. Even when the canal froze over, I was more just like put another jumper on. It's more about the lack of sunlight and therefore lack of electricity and the dust from the fire. And of course the reality of chores does not stop. I've had many people under this illusion that since moving on boat, my life would just be 100% relaxing, but that's never going to be true. It's still a dwelling and there's still sweeping to do. Quite quickly, we established a dynamic between us of my boyfriend driving and staying with the boat whilst I would open and close the lock gates. Since leaving London, there have been many locks in quick succession as we rose to Tring. And here's me working on one of them on the way down the other side from Tring. And just before that lock, here is the highest point in the canal, the Tring Cutting, which was massively dug out here to avoid having to make more locks to get fully to the summit, which may have made construction simpler in the time, but it's no good for us to moor here because with banks this steep, there's no sun for the solar panel and crap internet. The railway themed art along this wall of the factory is here because we've just gone under the railway line to Birmingham and as I mentioned earlier whilst you can't run a car this rail line has been following us the whole way with a train station in almost every town we've stopped in so getting to London has been no problem but unfortunately not all canals are this advantageous. Possibly my favourite feature on the canals has been the aqueducts. A river cannot do this. So the thought of an aqueduct and water above concrete just plays with my brain that we're floating on water to avoid crossing water or the road. <laughs> Originally here at the iron truck, you had to go down four locks cross the river going against the canal and then go up another four the other side and the construction of this aqueduct not only prevented this dangerous procedure but also helped 
keeping water in the canal and it not flowing into the river. And even as recent as the 1990s, they've still been building canal aqueducts such as here. This is Grafton Street and the edge of Milton Keynes and the aqueduct was built in the 90s when this street was built. Another fun piece of infrastructure is the electric swing bridge near Berkhampstead. You press a button and then before the bridge swings out, the barriers come down and there is a certain power you feel about cutting off the traffic to let your boat pass. It's quite satisfying. Our favourite place we have stayed so far though, it's not on the main canal, it's in a little branch called the Windover Arm. It's only partially still open, but at the end of it, you are cut off from everything. You are in the middle of a field, the cows come over at night. It is so tranquil, it is so peaceful. It's surrounded by lakes and farms and trees, but just over the hill is a medium-sized town, it's Tring. So again, you're not far from shops and pubs and everything else. We also had a little whiskered visitor come to the boat every night whilst we were down here. Now all that's left for me to say is stay tuned for some videos about the towns we'll be going through on the boat in the future. And me and Mr. Cat, whatever his name was, we'll see you in the next one.